Hello YouTubers, uh, this is a little project I've been working on. It's uh, about the Thane Heinz Bitoroid Transformer. I'm gonna give you an update on what I'm doing. This is a normal transformer. All the windings you see is from another project. I just used the secondary of this one, the bottom one. It's 10 volts uh, AC and right now what I'm doing is drawing uh, 240 milliamps. All right, what did I do? I took an old core of a transformer, grinded out the middle part of it, and uh, this yellow thing is a, a coil from an old uh, central heating uh, uh, machine. Uh, it's, it's just an AC coil. I place a little iron rod in the middle i will get one it's one centimeter thick just plain old iron and that's in the middle of this one it fits from the bottom to the top exactly uh, it's not electrically uh, connected to the core as you can see i placed some uh, tape over it so there's no electrical connection uh, then I wound two coils, uh, I don't recall the number of windings, it's not that much, but it's just uh, for showcase uh, purposes. Uh, one on this side, one on that side, and I uh, hooked them up in series, that way that they help each other. The, the thing that Thane Heinz coil is supposed to do is you pull this coil, uh, 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 switching uh, AC of course uh, north air, south air, north air, south air and vi vice versa north, south, north air. you know how it works uh, AC uh, when the north pole enters here it has two paths to go to the left or to the right and just like water uh, magnetism will flow both directions equally if there is uh, equally uh, uh, resistance well because everything is uh, uh, synchronized uh, the same amount of turns here as here, the same core everywhere, so everything is synchronized, the same. So the uh, flux will go to this coil and to this coil. And they're uh, wound and connected in, in, in such a way that when the North Pole enters here and the South Pole enters here, also the North Pole enters here and the South Pole enters here, and the two uh, coils are bucking each other so when you induce a current in these two coils the uh, back EMF or the, um, the, the magnetism that is generated by the coil itself is going back in a normal transformer it would oppose the primary coil but now they can oppose each other and the path of least resistance in this setup is through the core this is a laminated core and the core inside this one isn't connected physically because there is tape there and it's just plain iron so it's not that good of a magnetic conductor for the flows so what happens now is i i give a ac current into this one i get a, a fluctuating field going both ways these two coils oppose each other and it's supposedly so that there is no back EMF or uh, um, uh, hindrance in the primary coil. So you just put a current into it and that's it. What you get out is surplus. Now because of the uh, low extra windings, I don't get that much of a uh, surplus. Uh, actually <laughs> the voltage is lower than what I put in, but it's about the principle. In any situation when you uh, draw power from a system you have to increase your input power so supposedly this system doesn't have that let's see if that works so I put into the system 240 milli, uh, milliamps that's into this coil in an uh, AC current of exactly 10 volts I measured that before this uh, core is pretty stable and gives exactly 10 volts AC current. Well, uh, I've got a scope set up here. This is the output wave of 
these two coils combined in series. As you can see, it's a pretty nifty uh, sinus, uh, so uh, it stays a sinus. That was to be expected, of course. It's uh, about uh, 0.54 volts, what I measured. Um, this is a very old scope, so I'm glad it's still doing something. Anyone got a new scope? Just send it over. Uh, okay, so now we're going to test if the input amperage drops when I short circuit these two coils. It's now an open circuit because I didn't plug in this lead and I have it set to AC. As you can see, I hope you can see AC in the milliamp range, but it's not yet connected. So now I'm going to connect this lead. And you can see I'm dissipating 150 milliamps. 150 milliamps. And if we look at the scope signal, it hardly changed. So the output voltage stayed the same, which is very strange also. Uh, normally it drops uh, pretty big when you short circuited it. And I short circuited uh, uh, the two output coils over this meter. And that gives me 152 milliamps. Okay, that's not more than the input. And remember, the input was 240 milliamps. Now I will switch to the primary meter to see what my input is now that I short circuited the two output coils. Isn't that great? It really works. My input was 240 milliamps. It is now 230 milliamps. Well, give and take 10 milliamps. Let's say it's the same. I saw a drop, but let's say it's the same. It's tr still pretty freaking amazing. Oh, that you see it's fluctuated. It's freaking amazing that my input doesn't go up when I start to draw 155 milliamps at half a volt. Hmm. All right, so the power dissipated isn't that much, but any power dissipated at an output should be seen at the input being increased, and it doesn't. So Thane Heinz was right. Okay, that's it for now. I'm going to try another setup. I might film that one also today. If you have any ideas, comments, or anything else, you can see it's a really big mess here, but I try a lot of stuff. And I will be back to you with uh, some other stuff that you might interest and be interested in also. If you like my work and you like me to experiment on some things, just let me know. Uh, I can think of a lot of things, but I'm just one person. I can really use your help in your thinking. All right, that's it for now. I hope you enjoy this. If you do, uh, subscribe, uh, uh, click on the bell. I think that's notification or something like that. I don't really use YouTube that often, so I really don't get it yet. Um, but if you uh, like it, subscribe, uh, give me a thumbs up, and uh, give me any ideas. I can really use it. Thank you, and I will be back uh, for the next clip soon. Bye-bye.